This video is on naming ionic compounds and writing formulas from names. So our basic ionic compound is just a regular metal with a regular nonmetal. Our formula is going to be our metal with our nonmetal. We are going to crisscross our charges down to get metal, nonmetal. The name for these is going to be the metal name with a space and then the non-metal stem of the element with that IDE ending. So essentially the cation name and then the anion name, just like we've done previously. So if you had something like sodium ions aligned with chloride ions, we'd have NaCl, because both their charges were plus one. Note we don't carry the positive or negative, just the number of values, and its name would be sodium Chloride. This again is an ion, or sorry, an ionic compound that you're very familiar with. You all know what sodium chloride is, and if you associate your ionic compounds with sodium chloride, that will help you remember how to name them. Sodium is our metal name, chloride is our non-metals ion, chloride, and so you just put them together. So let's go through a couple examples. Let's start with the words. I have magnesium sulfide. Magnesium, we find on our periodic table, Mg, and I look on my periodic table, magnesium is here in group two, therefore it's going to have a charge of plus two. Sulfide, sulf is my stem, comes from sulfur, in group six, so it's going to have a charge of minus two. My charges crisscross down, just the values, and I get Mg2S2. I need to reduce my subscripts, both divisible by 2, so I get Mg1S1, and we don't write our 1, so I just get Mgs. Next, I have lithium nitride. Lithium is our metal. Lithium is at number 3. Lithium has one valence electron, so it becomes lithium plus 1. Nitride, nitri, is nitrogen. It's in group 7. It has 5 valence electrons, or it's atomic number 7. It has 5 valence electrons, so it wants 2 more, 3 more. Nitrogen wants 3 more electrons, so it'll have a charge of negative 3. I crisscross my values down, and I get Li3. N for lithium nitride. Now if we go back to just our elements, we can go ahead and name them. Ca is calcium. I write my element name calcium. Br is bromine. I take my stem, bro, and I add my IV ending. So I get bromine. Next I have Ga, that's gallium. And then the P is phosphorus, but it's my ion, so I have phos, five. Yes, spelling will count when you write your names. Ionic compounds can also be involved with transition metals. So a transition metal can bind or can form an interaction with a non-metal. Transition metals are all the metals in your D block of your periodic table. So looking at our periodic table, those are all these metals in here. Now transition metals are going to be the transition metal with that positive charge with the non-metal with the negative charge. To name these, we're going to use our transition metal name, and we need to put in a Roman numeral next to it inside parentheses. This is going to tell us the charge of the ion. And then we'll still have our nonmetal stem with that IDE ending. So why do we have to use Roman numerals? Well, transition metals can vary in charge. They can donate electrons in their highest S orbital, and then they can also donate electrons from their next, uh, next highest D orbital. So think about iron in our zinc plus 2 lab. We're looking at why was zinc positive 2 had a 
um, was a colorless solution. Well, I also had you look at iron and iron plus three. Iron was here. Iron, as an atom, had those four S2 electrons and the three D6. When iron became an ion with plus three charge, it lost those two electrons in the 4s orbital, and it lost one electron from our 3d orbital. Transition metals, not only do they lose the electrons in that s orbital, the highest energy, but they can also lose electrons from the d orbital. Because there's no specific pattern for any one type of transition metal, we use Roman numerals. So you're going to have to know your Roman numerals. You need to know numbers 1 through 10. So let's go ahead and start by trying to write the names from given formulas. So if I have vanadium with chlorine, I first look and see my nonmetal, what their charge is. I notice that I don't have any subscripts down here, so I'd like to see where is chlorine on the periodic table. Well, chlorine on our periodic table is in group 7, so I know it has a negative 1 charge. I can tell from my subscripts that my ratio of vanadium to chlorine is equal. So if chlorine had a negative one charge, that means vanadium had to have a positive one charge. Because our vanadium gave one electron to our chlorine, thus creating the ionic interaction. Because I had vanadium plus one, I'm going to have vanadium, parenthesis, Roman numeral one, and parenthesis, and then I have chloride. My next example, I have zinc and phosphorus. Because I have subscripts on both of my atoms, I can go ahead and I can crisscross them back up. It's just the opposite of what we did before. Zinc being a metal is going to have a positive 2 charge, and phosphorus being a nonmetal will have a negative 3 charge. Now we write this as zinc. Roman numeral 2, and then phos 5. Now zinc is one of those special exceptions. Zinc always only loses its two electrons in that 4s orbital. Because its d orbital is completely filled, all those electrons are paired. So because zinc always goes plus 2, we do not write our Roman numeral 2 in our name of zinc phosphide or any other zinc compound. Going the other direction, here I have iron 3 nitride. Iron, Fe plus 3, nitride, nitrogen, goes negative 3 because it's an anion. I go ahead and I crisscross my charges down. And I see that I have Fe3, N3. Now, both of my subscripts are the same, which means my ratio from one to the other is equal, so I can reduce my subscripts and just make them one and one. Again, I don't write subscripts of one. Thanks, Matt. So I just have FEN for iron 3 nitride. Here I have my next one, silver oxide. Silver, AG, oxide, O, oxygen has a charge of negative 2. Silver is our other exception to the rule. Silver always is plus 1 charged. And that's why we don't write our Roman numeral. So I crisscross my charges down, and I get Ag2O for silver oxide. Lastly, I have ionic compounds with polyatomic ions. We abbreviate polyatomic ions as PAI. This kind of compound is a metal or transition metal, and that's going to interact an electrostatic force with our polyatomic ions. All polyatomic ions are negatively charged except for ammonium. Ammonium, this NH4, has a positive one charge. So PAI, or polyatomic ions, Poly meaning multiple, atomic, atom, and ions, saying that we have a group of atoms put together with an overall charge. They are always going to stay as a unit, so we must use parentheses around our polyatomic ion to keep it as one unit. 
On your periodic table reference packet, you'll see that you have a chart of polyatomic ions. Go ahead and locate that now. You should see it looks like this, starting with ammonium at the top down to phosphate at the bottom. Whenever you see that there's more than two atoms in a compound, you'll refer to this chart. Notice on the fourth box down we have acetate, and that acetate can be written as both C2H3O2, the negative charge, or SCH3COO. So the thing we need to know with polyatomic ions is their pattern of oxygens. We're going to look at our chlorine ions and polyatomic ions with chlorine to see what their pattern is. ClO4 minus 1 is our chlorine polyatomic ion with our most oxygens, and then we decrease by one oxygen as we go down. ClO3, we find on our chart, is called chlorate. It has the ending of ATE. If we add one more oxygen to it and have ClO4 minus 1, we write per chlorate. This has a suffix of per, or a prefix of per, and a suffix of eight. If we have one less oxygen from our chlorate, we get chlorite. Here we have a suffix of ITE. Losing one more oxygen, we get hypochlorite. Here we have the prefix hypo and the suffix ITE. Notice that my ITE endings are for fewer oxygens and my ATE endings are for more oxygens. You ate more oxygens because you were hungry. Finally, we need to be able to name our polyatomic ion ionic compounds. Just like before, we name our cation name, but now for our polyatomic ion, we just write its name. We don't have to do anything special to it. So for an example, we have calcium, and then we see we have OH with parentheses around it. Notice there's more than just two elements here, so we have to refer to our polyatomic ion chart. You know that calcium is just a metal, so that can't be your polyatomic ion. So we need to go to our OH. We find it on the chart, and we see that that is hydroxide. Hydroxide has a charge of negative 1, and calcium has a charge of plus 2. Notice that I have parentheses around my OH. I write it as calcium, and then my OH, of hydroxide. Notice that this is not CaOH2 without parentheses. Here I only have one oxygen and two hydrogens, whereas before I had two hydroxides. Let's go through a couple examples. Again, here we see that we have multiple elements in a compound. So that tells us we have to refer to our chart. NH4 on our chart is ammonia. So I'll just write ammonia. Sulfur is an anion here, so I need to write my stem, sulf, and then I have that IDE ending. Next, I have magnesium, and then with the polyatomic ion, with my parentheses, so I write magnesium, and I look for CN on my chart, I see that CN is cyanide. Now I'm going the other direction. Sodium, I recognize as my metal, Na. Carbonate has this ATE ending. That's a giveaway that I have a polyatomic ion, just like my rule for polyatomic ions from before. Carbonate, I need to locate on my chart. Carbonate is CO3 and has a charge of negative 2. And that's a charge of my polyatomic ion, so I'm going to put parentheses around that. Sodium is in group 1, it has a charge of plus 1. With parentheses around my polyatomic ion, I drag my charges down and crisscross them, and I get Na2 parenthesis CO3 and parenthesis. Now, for my last example, I have calcium acetate. Calcium, I know, is my metal that forms a plus 2 cation. Acetate, so remember there's two different versions, I like to stick to the one that has less letters. Acetate, I write as C. 2H3O2 
with that negative one charge. Put your parentheses around your polyatomic ion, leaving that charge out to dry. We'll crisscross them down. Then we have Ca1 parentheses, C2, H3, O2 parentheses, and that 2 comes all the way to the outside. Now we don't write 1, so we can go ahead and erase that. 